you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed doctrine here's how the bible puts it it says study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needs not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so if you're in ministry here or god is calling you into ministry realize that beyond titles beyond whatever ministerial office you are mandated by god every man of god every man of god who participates in the ministry of building men must be a teacher i repeat every man of god who participates in the ministry of building men must be a teacher the teaching ministry is the exclusive platform that makes for the growth and the maturity of the saints and if for any reason that man of god is not a teacher you must unashamedly outsource a sound teaching ministry that becomes the pillar for growth and development are we together amen tonight i am teaching on a subject that i believe would bless us all the house of god please write it down we're exploring by the spirit what the church is the ecclesia the house of god Every Sunday, every Wednesday, Tuesday, or every other day, especially in Africa, we have people moving from their homes to Christian religious places of worship. And on average, most believers will tell you, I am going to church. Is that true? Where are you? They say, I am in church. And the word church has been seldom understood by many believers. And um, we've had preachers here and there try to bring illumination to the subject of the house of God and the church. It is my responsibility under God and my joy to enlighten us according to scripture, to understand in addition to the truths that we have learned and we continue to learn, to understand what exactly is the church. The goal for this teaching is to bring us to superior spiritual knowledge as to the implication of being in and being part of the house of God. Are we blessed? Genesis 28. Let's start from there for a reference. Genesis 28. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's begin our reading from verse 10. This is a scripture about Jacob and his encounter with the God of heaven, the first encounter. He had two principal encounters. The first was in 28, chapter 28. The second was in chapter 22, having been in Laban's house for over 20 years. Now the Bible says, Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. Uh -huh. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. The Bible says, and he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows. Now, I don't know how he slept on stones. And lay down in that place to sleep. And the Bible says, he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Follow the dream carefully, 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. At this point, there was no God of Jacob. The land whereon thou liest, to thee I will give it and to thy seed. Uh -huh. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed next verse 
and behold I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and I will bring thee again into this land for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to you of this is a good place for someone to say amen, amen. that God is saying I will not leave you until I do to you everything I said I would do amen. 16 Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not right so we see lack of discernment here 17 he was afraid and said how dreadful is this place here was his conclusion this is none other but the house of God and this is the gate of heaven in other words this kind of experience based on what my father taught me if such an experience should happen where you have the innumerable company of angels is that true where you have God himself speaking to edify to reveal his promises to show you his ways and to assure you of his presence he says this is none other there is no other environment that can capture this kind of encounter except the house of God hallelujah this is very powerful next scripture Matthew chapter 16 the first biblical mention of the word church from verse 13 Matthew 16 and verse 13 Jesus was with the disciples and the Bible says he came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi and he asked the disciples so the revelation of the church according to Jesus began with a question what is the question who do men say that I the son of man am his identity as the son of man and they said some say that thou art John the Baptist some say Elias Elijah now some say Jeremiah some say you are one of the prophets and then 15 he said unto them but whom say ye that I am that means these people are giving their propositions because they are far they are not close they've not had the privilege of proximity now that you have been with me we've eaten together we've gone for crusades together what is your conclusion about me and Jesus Christ was amazed that none of them could speak all of those multitudes the 72 the 12 now they stood and they were completely in limbo not knowing what to say in response to that question 16 and Simon Peter answered and said thou art the Christ thou art the Christ the son of the living God 17 and Jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou Simon son of Jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you but my father which is in heaven now he makes a very strong statement and I say unto you thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it please keep that scripture there it says you are Peter and upon this rock now I'm not here to bring up theological debates many people have said the rock is Peter many people have said the rock no 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 it's very clear from scripture he says you are Peter and upon this rock what rock upon this revelation upon this understanding you have had that I am Christ the son of the living God are we together now yes upon this revelation I will build my church and if allowed to be built by me it will be so formidable that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it are we still together so Jesus here is speaking about the church he made mention of the fact that more than just dying for the sins of the world that he came to inaugurate 
an institution. He came to inaugurate a phenomenon, if I would call it, called the church. And he said that this entity will be so formidable. Listen carefully. It will be the entity that sustains the power to triumph and prevail over the gates of hell. The idea of church did not start with the founders of ministries. The idea of church did not start with some of our patriarchs alive and dead. The idea of church was not just a government initiative to have an institution that supports activities um, that relate to faith and spirituality. No. The idea of church was God's own invention. It was a product of God's own intelligence. Listen very carefully. Because many believers view church as several things. For others, they believe that church represents a building that has some level of excellence connected to it where believers come together and then they have the opportunity to worship God. Others believe that church refers to individuals. Others believe that church refers to any platform that carries a semblance of spirituality or any platform that seems to have loyalty to the tenets of the Christian faith. So my question tonight very briefly is what is the church? I'm going to be giving you three dimensions of the church in our discussion tonight. What exactly is the church? Because if you do not know what the church is, you will embrace any definition that the devil gives you about the church. The reason why many people do not respect the church is because they do not even understand what it is. It is a very mysterious entity that the government cannot define. It is a mysterious entity that academicians cannot define. It was not a product of a research from an institution. The church came from the mind of the fountain of wisdom himself. So journey with me as we explore three definitions which represent three dimensions to our understanding of the church. Number one, the first revelation of the church according to scripture is found in Jeremiah chapter 51 from verse 20. Please give it to us. Jeremiah chapter 51 from verse 20. It says, thou art my battle axe and my weapons of war for with thee I will break in pieces the nations and with thee I will destroy kingdoms. Uh-huh. It says, and with thee I will break in pieces the horse and his rider and with thee I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider and with thee I will break in pieces man and woman. With thee I will break in pieces old and young. With thee I will break in pieces young man and the maid. Last verse. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. And with thee I will break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. With thee I will break in pieces captains and ruler. Is there any class of society that was missing here? None. You are my battle axe. I am using you. So the first definition of the church, write it down please, that the church is a spiritual strategy. More than a people, the first revelation of the church that I want you to have is the church as a spiritual strategy, an invention from God's intelligence, a spiritual strategy, listen to me, mandated to be used by God as the only tool that is able to purge, to cleanse, to build, and to reveal Christ and his purposes in its fullness. This is the church. The church is a strategy. For instance, if, um, if I have a flat tire or I have a, pro a problem with my car and I'm unable to move it, I can hire another car that will help to drag it to a place where it will be fixed. And a strategy is usually invented where I can connect. Is that true? And 
connect with a moving car that is alive, a towing van, and then connect to the vehicle, and the towing van pushes it. Now, that is a strategy to remedy for something. The fact that the church came into being is already proof that there was something that was not correct. Are we together now? So the church has come as a spiritual strategy to remedy a condition, to remedy a situation. There are names that we are called in scripture. One of it is light. Another is salt. Jesus Christ himself called us light and salt. That immediately suggests that for us to be called light means there is darkness. For us to be called salt means there is a level of tastelessness somewhere and lack of preservation. So the church is a spiritual strategy. The church, in fact, is the only spiritual strategy that sustains the ability to reveal Christ in his fullness and to bring him glory. Please write it down. The only spiritual strategy that has the capacity to reveal Christ, to subdue principalities and powers. Oh, this is powerful. Thou art my battle axe. That means wherever there is darkness, wherever there is confusion, listen carefully, wherever there is lack of growth and enlightenment, wherever the purposes of God have not been made institutional within any territory, it is a reflection that the church may not be there or the church may not be shining as light. The church is a strategy. So do not ask why you are put in the midst of darkness. You are a strategy. God's strategy. Are we together? For every car that you buy, usually you would have a few tools in that car. Is that true? Most people would have a toolbox containing screwdrivers and, and, and um, you know, and um, spanners and all of those things. You would have an extra tire somewhere in the car and you would have a jack, you know, to help you if you have a flat tire. All of those things are tools and they are strategies to make sure that for no reason do you stop moving forward if you need to. So when you have a flat tire, what do you do? You go to the back of that car and open up the toolbox and you begin to effectively use the tools that will help maybe replacement. There are times that you can bring out an extra tire that helps to move the car. There are times that you can bring out all kinds of tools. That is how you are. That means whenever there is darkness, God pulls out from his toolbox and brings someone out. The church is a spiritual strategy. Wow. I am not just a man of God. I am a strategy. Do you know what that means? I am a strategy, a tool to be able to achieve something very divine, achieve something very exact as far as the revelation of the Christ is concerned. That immediately cures you from this sense of complex and inferiority. You did not just happen across the surface of the earth. You were a strategy. A strategy takes time to bring forth. Many of you are mathematicians. If you are, you are trying to solve a problem, you sit down, you think, scientists will come up with all kinds of hypotheses and go through all kinds of verification systems until it becomes a theory. You are the final decision of the intelligence of God. Did you hear what I said? Your, your arrival, the church as a strategy, means you are the final decision of a conclusion. The parliament of heaven sat down and thought of how the purposes of God will remain and you were the conclusion of that meeting. The church is a spiritual strategy. The only strategy that sustains the ability to make kingdom come a reality. Is God speaking to anyone? Hmm. so when you know this you do not begin to frown at the church every time you see the church involved in issues that represent darkness if it is true that the church is a strategy it means that strategy should find expression in politics in government in business, am I right? 
He said, I will break in pieces. And he began to list different people. Men were captured in that experience. Women, maids, rulers, princes, captains, everyone. So, the cure for the political decadence in Africa generally is the church. The cure for the economic problems of men. This is the reason why when you say the church has no business in empowering men, you are already, it is, it is um, what do we call it now? You are insulting the very definition of the church. Wherever there is darkness is exactly where we are invited. Is someone learning now? Yeah. Can I tell you the truth? If everybody becomes a preacher called into the fivefold ministry, the church will die. Because that was not, the Bible says some. He gave some. So the proposition that everybody should become a man of God like to preach as the way to bring kingdom come is a very sincere but inaccurate understanding. The pulpit is the platform that shapes the understanding of the people like I'm doing. But the real place of assignment is not the pulpit. The real place of assignment is wherever there is darkness. Help me list a few places that you know in our world today where there is darkness. In one word or two words, everywhere. Am I right on that? Someone say everywhere. Does that include the government? Does that include schools? Does that include our banking system? Everywhere. So how relevant is the church? Are you sure the church should be relevant in activities of finances? Are you sure the church should be relevant in politics and governance? Are you sure the church should be relevant in handling demons and principalities and powers? No other strategy sustains the power to do that. Listen, can I be honest with you? Based on scripture and based on history, almost, and I'm, I'm saying this as an opinion, which is grounded on scripture, almost every other religion and institution that I know do not have the power to cast out demons. What happens is called occultic pacifism. Pacifism is an act of appeasal. It was an ancient ritual that was used to appease demons. That means when a spirit comes and is troubling an individual through some um, activity of necromancy and all of that, you conjure the spirit to ask you what it wants. And the spirit can say, I'm hungry. You are eating and I'm not eating. And you ask, what do you want? He said, bring one goat. You see it happen in our cultures. Bring one goat, bring one chicken, make sure it's black. And so based on what the spirit is asking for, you politely and laboriously go and look for what it's looking for. And then it will seem to pacify itself. You will see that the individual will have a semblance of healing. Then you continue making progress and the spirit will come again. In ancient times, Old Testament particularly, when they found people who were demonized, they were usually stoned to death. Because since they did not have the ability, except for a few people who were involved in casting out demons. And the art of deliverance or, or casting out demons was not something that was really understood. You see from scripture. So, when Jesus showed up, as a model of the church and there were demonic people instead of killing the people he could neatly with surgical precision separate the influence from the individual and when they saw this they said no you are using Beelzebub the prince of demons you have found a way of rising in the realm of the spirit to negotiate your way with this prince of demons. You are just manipulating us. And Jesus said, no. If I cast it by Beelzebub, by who do your own fathers? Because many of them entered into covenants and fraternity with demon spirits. Now look up, please. Listen. Most of the African cultures today have people who are mediums. Is that true? Their assignment is to be um, the mediators between the spirit entities that control those territories. We have all kinds of names, but they are all the same. So, 
when a land seems to be barren, listen carefully, when a land seems to not produce optimally or when there is war and people are dying or there's a plague or pandemic of some sort, usually these individuals who can be priests or mediums or whatever they are, they are mandated to go through divination and all kinds of satanic operation to now ask those spirits what is wrong. Is that true? And to do that, they have to use divination and conjure these spirits. Should I teach this now? But listen, listen. The only way you move spirits from one safe location according to them to another safe location is to simulate the habitation of that spirit. Let me give you an instance. Now, we will never glorify the devil in the name of Jesus. But say I were not a believer and say I'm some idol worshiper in the village somewhere. If I want to call a spirit from wherever it is to a festival that is happening, do you know what I need to do? My first assignment is to study the habitat of that spirit spiritually and then through these sacrifices i simulate the same environment of that spirit it can now live wherever it is and come right there and still feel at home this is the reason why based on that same principle god is comfortable to be in heaven and yet live in your heart because your heart is a simulation of the throne so he can stay comfortable in your heart the holy ghost has never complained living in you are we together now? Yes. What happens is when you go through that process of salvation, something really happens to your heart. It is heaven manifesting in your heart. Now on legal basis, the Holy Spirit can reside within your heart and find the same comfort that he had when he was on Jesus. Powerful mystery. Listen to me. Most of the problems in our world today are spiritual in origin. Did you know that? And then do you believe that? Please believe. Please in the name of Jesus and in the name of wisdom, believe early. That most of the problems that a man will face in his lifetime, personally and institutionally, are largely spiritual in origin now when they manifest physically they will have political expressions they will have economic expressions are we together they will have sociological expressions medical expressions intellectual expressions but largely the same way all things came from the realm of the spirit all troubles come from the realm of the spirit for further study i make reference to the book of job and you will learn there that nothing just happens in this realm. The book of Job, we've studied it a bit, at least chapter 1 here. Job was a sincere man who was going about his business. The Bible says he feared the Lord and eschewed evil. And then he would offer sacrifices in advance for his children. Then the Bible says one day, something happened in the heavens. Is that true? Satan was in their midst and God made a boast of Job. According to scripture, have you considered my servant Job? And then the devil told the Lord, he said, does he serve you for nothing? Give me the permission to touch him. And you will see, paraphrasing, if he will not curse you to your face. And he said, okay, go. I give you permission to touch every other thing but preserve his life. Sin two, there was three days I will resurrect. Can I tell you, if Jesus Christ did not send the word, those gates will not open because now being dead he did not have a body and according to the law of territory once you exit this realm it will take someone with a body to call you from that realm you cannot enter without a body i know that the gate said who is this king of glory but let me ask you a question who said lift up your heads The same way you can be sleeping and a scripture is saying, touch not my anointed. <laughs> See, 
if you don't understand this, you will not understand the ministry of prayer investments. That you can send the word of God into 2023. You can send it into 2024. It is only you that celebrates New Year. The word of God does not celebrate New Year. There is no such thing as New Year. The realm of the spirit is, is a continual Someone in one minute, can you send words? Send words in one minute. I am the head and not the tail. In the name of Jesus, above only and not beneath. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Gentiles, come to my light. Kings, to the brightness of my rising. The favor of the Lord is upon my life. I decree and declare no weapon that is fashioned against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me it will fall in judgment don't be silent i decree and declare a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side none shall hurt me with my eyes shall i see and behold the reward of the wicked that when men say there is a casting down i decree and declare that there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus, my path is as a shining light that shines ever brighter, even unto the perfect day. I know whom I believe, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. I am above only, above thrones, dominions, seated with Christ. In the name of Jesus, blessed in the morning, blessed in the evening, blessed in the afternoon blessed in the city favored by the spirit of the living god hallelujah listen please hear me believers you are being trained to know how to be victorious this is what you are receiving A strategy hear me I will tell you the principal way the church is used as a strategy to bring everything to the obedience of Christ do you know how in this kingdom the church executes its role as a strategy through the power of speakings words the primary tool for change for a believer is not just physical action the words especially when you are dealing with demonic forces when you are dealing with beloved in christ thank you for watching this video if you are new here too i would entreat you to kindly subscribe to this channel for me and then hit on the like button also i would want you to share this message across I would want you to do one thing for us. Kindly tell us in the comment section where you're watching us from and you've got any testimony for us. Kindly let us know. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.